We begin the journey, a sacred journey, a walk for all mankind. We join this procession of pilgrims on a journey that begun over 2,000 years ago. We join beggars and kings, priests and paupers, young, old, man, woman, child, and all peoples. We join a ragged line of all mankind, following a single man's journey to a hill called Calvary. The movement down this road kicks up the dust of the sacred past, the memory of old story. If you long to find mystery and truth, if you ache for a different path, come and join us now on the walk for all mankind. Skip now with children grabbing branches off the trees. Scurry now with beggars and thieves stealing a glance at the show. Wobble with the aching joints of the old and see how our walk, our procession takes on the same rhythmic gait of the donkey he rides. Such an odd beast with such a notable burden. This donkey and her foal tugging along carry Jesus, the Nazarene, toward Jerusalem. Feel the press of the crowd around you as you reach the brow of the hill. The pace slows, the crowds press, the tension rises. Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, we are here and for a moment you catch a glimpse of his eyes. What is that, grief? Has the dust caught his eyes? Does he pull tears because of harsh words spoken by a few? Or does he know something? Something that will happen here that only he is aware of. Oh, but there is a feast in Jerusalem now. Everyone get ready. Have you gotten the wine? Have you gotten the bitter herbs? Remember the roasted lamb and the eye-shaped eggs with salt water for tears. Every year this feast, the feast of Passover, the feast of freedom, a night unlike any other, where God would save us from his wrath for sin and save us from death and bondage. Have you gotten the candles? Have the children found what was lost? Get it ready. It's a feast. See his disciples scatter to assemble all that is necessary. They've got to get it right. It's the feast, the feast of Passover. And now it's all ready. Everyone is in place. Like a painting, it's all perfect. With Jesus right in the middle. But wait, something's not right. Can you see it? Maybe you can hear it. There's a tension in the air in the room, stealing the joy from the feast. I don't know, maybe he's just nervous. No, something is not right. Jesus takes the bread and he gives thanks and he breaks it and he gives it to them and says something that no one has ever heard before. He brings in something new and alarming to the ceremony. He says, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this like this in remembrance of me. We take and eat not understanding but trusting that what he says is what he means and then he takes the cup and he blesses it and he gives it and says take and drink this is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin do this often as you remember me so we take and drink, not knowing what to say, but trusting that he means what he says, and we are aware of a profound change in things. It's alarming, the perspective and the place. It's alarming. And then he says, one of you, as he takes some bread and dips it in a bowl, will betray me. Panic, all 12 at once. Who is it? Is it me? Is it you? Jesus looks worried now, troubled by their talk, tense. Hurriedly, he gets up and goes to the olive grove.
Gethsemane. Jesus still seems anxious, wringing his hands, terse almost. The disciples find an old olive tree, the one usually slept by. It's so old that the crack in its side could almost fit them. They take a ripe olive straight from the branch, a fine aperitif to a strange new feast. Eyelids heavy, the very night seems to press in on them. Scuffed up from the day's work, they hold together in that spot, allowing the weight of sleep to take them, not noticing the enemy in the garden slithering by them. A snake, leathery and bright as fire. Follow this ancient serpent as it winds its way through the cluster of disciples. Oh, the creep and the crawl, if they knew what was flowing around them and through them and over them, though right past them, it's headed towards Jesus. That's its prey. Like some mammoth constrictor, it stalks and slithers and scales the tree to try and get him like a gibbet around his neck. But as the snake slithers, Jesus mumbles a prayer. O Lord, God of my salvation, I cry out by day and night before you. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry. Narrowly escaping the coils of the snake, Jesus finds his disciples, nudges them awake. They move to a new spot and the sinister weight of darkness pushes them into sleep while Jesus goes off a second time praying. You have caused my companions to shun me. You have made me a horror to them. I am shut in so that I cannot escape. My eye grows dim through sorrow. Every day I call upon you, O Lord. The serpent hides in the leaves of the tree now, waiting to strike. Jesus returns a second time, begging them, scolding them. It's time to stay awake. It's time. But his desperate cries fall on ears deaf to his sincere call. They are bone tired to the last, crushed under the weight of Morpheus's curse, and they cannot but reply with sonorous snores. And desperate at the last, like an olive in the final press, Jesus returns to pray, but I, O oh Lord, cry out to you. In the morning my prayer comes before you. O oh Lord, why do you cast my soul away? Why do you hide your face from me? The olives in that grove, when crushed, produce not a golden oil, but a visceral sanguineous red. When crushed, this is what happens. When Jesus was crushed that third time, his sweat poured out blood. He was crushed, and a crowd slithered down past the path to the spot that was known. It carried its torches and made its approach look like the move of a huge, fiery snake, but with no bite for Jesus. This snake led by a familiar face, by Judas. It bore no fangs for the Savior. Instead, it came right up to Jesus. It was Judas with a kiss. Jesus walks forward towards these men and says, Who do you seek? Now Peter's not waiting around for this. He's not going to sit by and let this happen. He's got a sword. It is enough. He pulls it from his side, cuts wildly. Malchus's ear hits the dirt. Blood on the garden floor. Now the crowd recoils. Once attacked, it's dangerous. Enough, Jesus says. Parentally, he scolds Peter with his eyes and he begs him, those who live by the sword, die by it, Peter. Put it down. This is not how you're going to fight, Peter. This is not how you're going to die. This is the end of violence. Christ calls all who would follow him to end the violence and to embrace the persecution that would lead from a death to a resurrection. Exhausted, Jesus turns to them again and says, who do you seek? And he picks up Malchus's ear and like a potter with clay, he replaces the torn man with whole healing again. 
Jesus of Nazareth, they say. And he says, I am. so as to not let the light of truth in. A rabble of discontent, wringing their hands, shaking their fists, tapping their agitated feet from their seats of judgment. Not my Messiah. Get rid of him. Force him to walk to Herod while they drag their feet. Herod stands in wonder, hoping for a miracle, but only dumb silence is what he gets, and there's no found evidence, so he shuffles him off to the next kangaroo court. to Pilate, each step increasing the agony of the injustice. Who are you, he says. Silence is all he gets. He's a dangerous traitor, the crowds cry. Silence is all they get. Why do you want me to be here? What do you want? Do you want Barabbas? Give us Barabbas, they cry. Jesus, silent like a lamb before the slaughter. Pilate, enraged, questions him. Who are you? Are you the king of the Jews? Why do you bother them? Why are you bothering me? So Pilate, in his self-righteous indignation, washes his hands of the whole business, and now a penelope of things happen all at once. The crowd swirls with the energy of a storm. The soldiers take him away. The insults, the fists, the kicking, the hurting. As Jesus moves, the storm moves around him. The sheer energy it took to get him through that maelstrom. Bodies swirling, everything in motion, until the front breaks. They take him to the post. They chain him down, and now the real work begins. Like blacksmiths preparing a forge of suffering, these soldiers go to work, each with his tool to work the body of Jesus into an apocalypse of human depravity and suffering, rods to prepare him, beating him like a feistus on his anvil, claws on the whip like a manticore, tearing his skin past the flesh, exposing his ribs at the bone and his lungs beneath, leaving no space of his body untouched. They are death's grim artists, and they spare no part of the canvas for their glory portrait of torture and wild unsated lust for blood and now when they're finished they garland him with purple it stings as it stanches his open wounds and the mockery of a victor's royal crown instead of a plume or olive branch thorns Cursed to bring humanity's ruin on full display. A solar disk of suffering. A halo of hate to crown Jesus' head. More of a worm now than a man. King of suffering. Chief of the forsaken ones. Whose only crime was telling the truth. And now it begins. The reverse of Palm Sunday. The waves of palms are exchanged for the jeers of the crowd. They traded hosannas for hate, and now he begins the walk, leaving the place he just came. A dark parade of sorrows in contrast to a celebration of praise just days earlier. Now it begins. The walk. The walk for all mankind. 
you walk with us, you need to push hard into this crowd. You cannot be swept away in it. You have to need to follow him to find out what happens. You won't accidentally discover the details. You have to pursue them. Push down this way. Take each step. Pass the crowd who breathes out disgusting bellows of hate speech. Hear them shake their signs at this poor man, calling him evil, calling him sinner, telling him that God hates him. See the people mourning, true weeping, so hard that it heaves their chests as if they just completed a marathon. Hear the sound that people make only when they lose something as precious as a loved one, as innocent as a child. The deep, throaty moan of those without an answer. Hear Mary wail like a mad woman at what they did to her son. It's not enough. They throw trash on him. They pelt him with stones. It's the gauntlet of all humankind. Every ignorant line of protesters was there. Every mob of narrow-mindedness was in that stretched way that led to Golgotha, the place of Adam's skull, the place of original death, the destiny of all mankind. And there, at the precipice of the Magdalen, they nailed him to the cross, one for each hand. One dread nail through both feet. There the walk has ended. Violence, injustice, curses. The whole of creation wails. The temple veil, it was torn, it was unraveled, it was unmade, rent asunder. There would be no more. There is the end of the road. There we must stop. There he cried out in a loud voice. There he gasped. And there he rasped like a rattle. And there he breathed his last. And died for all mankind. This death was not the end. It was the only way to make a new path to walk. The God who was estranged from his creation because of their wantonness is reconciled by his self-giving for you. He made a path for all mankind to walk, but it took everything that he had. He made a way where there was none before and where it would have been impossible for a way to be unless it was made by a God. The crucifixion is a catastrophe, but the result was a you catastrophe. It is the sudden reversal of the worst to the unbelievably best. It's the coming from behind victory. It's the impossible shot. It's the past the buzzer point. It's the greatest story ever known. It's the way for all mankind back to the paradise that was lost. It is the stitching together of a new fabric for being. It is the resurrection. Now the stone is rolled back. The angels and scared women greet Jesus, not dead or ghostly, but alive, genuinely alive, skipping from the grave like a person just released from prison, like a child with good news to share. Jesus turns this walk into a dance with reckless abandon dancing, like nobody's watching but you really wouldn't care if they were kind of celebrating. A new way of moving in this life, a new life, a new hopeful rhythm for our feet to tap to, a new you. Walk with him, walk with us, walk with saints and angels and prophets and priests and whole nations and moms and dads and grams and gramps and all the children. Walk right past death's door into a new and forever life. Come walk the streets of the new city, Jerusalem forever.
walk those eternal streets and see what you were made for. And when you were there with me just now, you might hear an old familiar tune, a holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. And if you don't know the tune, it's okay. Angels will teach you the words and just follow the congregation as it sings. So now go. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. For He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.